All right. So uh, let's get started. I promise I only have a couple of slides and then we go into live debugging. So I was just looking up the definition. I think you all know what debugging is. What I think is more interesting that debugging is not only using the debugger in the IDE, but it can also involve other stuff like uh, system or print line, for example. It's a very easy debugging style, but you can also do post-mortem debugging, right? So when the IDE uh, has uh, an out-of-memory error, then you should probably uh, set it up with um, dumping on out-of-memory so you can actually analyze the, uh, the dump post-mortem to actually find out uh, where the problem might have been. So this is probably the interesting part. Uh, a little bit of a history of debugging. I guess uh, you might all know um, what that is, right? It's the first bug which has been found. Um, but it's not actually the first time that uh, something about a bug was written. Um, so the first one uh, that, that the bug term came up was uh, in a letter from Thomas Edison to uh, one of his associates in 1878. He already uh, coined the a term with uh, bugs being uh, little faults and difficulties. So it's uh, very much earlier than, uh, than we usually think it is. All right, and uh, let's go to some uh, live debugging, right? So I kind of screwed up the live coding yesterday. Let's see how live, coding, uh, live debugging goes. So my little application here, <coughs> which, um, where we have a person and we have a boat hire, and uh, then the person goes to the boat hire and hires a boat and gets back a boat and we just uh, print out uh, the name of the person and the boat, right? So very, very simple. Uh, let's quickly run this. And uh, it says, first of all, it says uh, X Rabea got boat Titanic. So there's a problem over here because I only passed him the name Rabea. So something changed the name somewhere. So we have to find that error. So uh, let's go into debugging mode. And uh, what I actually did over here is, uh, usually uh, when I go to debugging mode, I sometimes forget to uh, set my breakpoints, right? So you can uh, set up your launch configuration um, to actually stop in the main method right away. <laughs> so uh, to actually reach the run method, we are now going to step in into that and uh, step over. And now we want to have a look, OK, how did we actually uh, in initialize uh, the person over there? And uh, let's have a quick look at the variables. I'm sorry, it's very, very small. But um, so what we see over here is uh, it's uh, the person and it has an ID over here, right? Because I didn't, don't have a print uh, line uh, uh, two string method in the person. So what we can do when we are using objects which don't provide a two string method, we can uh, just uh, right click over here and say we want a new detail formatter. And uh, please, for this object, always print out uh, the name and the age so we can actually see that. And uh, now we have, uh, for the value, we have name and age here. I actually um, have another column over here which uh, still gives me the actual type, so I don't miss that information over there. So um, there's actually an error uh, in here uh, which says uh, I'm 31. I'm not actually 31, so we quickly have to change this. When you want to change values during debugging, you sometimes don't want to start over, right? So for me, it would have been very easy just to change it now and start over. But what you can also do is, um, first of all, I want to re-execute the first line of code which initializes the person object over there. So I can uh, click over here and say uh, drop to frame. So it's going to start over with, with the method again, right? So it's kind of stepping back in time. Um, this doesn't always work, so if you have any, any side effects uh, to the things you were doing, they are not rolled back, right? So it's just starting over again with, with the same method. So I'm uh, going to step into the method now and uh, say, okay, um, go to the next step, and there uh, the age is wrong, right? It's uh, 31. I can just uh, click here and uh, change the value and um, hit enter, and then the value is uh, 34, which uh, can be seen here. It's now initialized in the object to 34. So it's uh, kind of neat uh, that you can actually uh, do those things over there. So if we keep on running, uh, we still get that, got that error over here, uh, which somehow changes the name of the person. So if you want uh, to find that error, uh, we just go into the person and set a breakpoint on the field instead of any method. And I also used a longbow over here, so I can't really see my setter, which also might change the name. But I can uh, right click on, in the outline and uh, set a breakpoint um, over the outline. So this also works if you don't have the source code of a method, uh, then you just go to the outline. If you are trying to debug some uh, library, you at least can see the parameters which are passed into the method. So it's quite convenient if you, if you do that over the outline. And um, so we should be seeing now uh, in a minute where, uh, 
which actually changes the name because we now have uh, breakpoints over there. I also want to know um, what the, the, are the boats which are actually there because I always get the boat Titanic. I don't really want to have the Titanic, right? It's kind of kind of dangerous to ride on the Titanic, I heard. Uh, and I've actually seen it last week when I was in Belfast in the museum. So um, we can uh, go over here now into the boat and uh, let's put a breakpoint on the constructor over here to actually see who's uh, constructing the boats to maybe find out uh, what the names are. Uh, then we run, a, run it again in the debug mode and uh, let's just uh, continue and to hit our first breakpoint. First breakpoint is modification of the field because I set a breakpoint on the field. The first mod modification of our name field is quite okay, right? It's in the constructor, that's uh, all right. Uh, so we ignore that for now. Uh, then we hit the breakpoint of the boat. And the, uh, the breakpoint is quite nice, but if I have like 100 boats which are getting initialized, I don't always want to stop there. But I want to see their names, right? So I can uh, set a breakpoint over here on the line and remove the constructor breakpoint. And what I do is uh, I right click now and say breakpoint properties and I make it a conditional breakpoint. A conditional breakpoint only stops when it hits the condition over here. So it's kind of an if, right? Uh, but what I can also do with it, it says only suspend when true. So I can uh, put a system out print line over here, even if you can't read it, you just have to believe me. I'm just uh, saying system out print line, um, name over here, and I say return false. So the debugger won't stop, but it will still issue the system out print line. So it's kind of tracing, right? Tracing over the debugger. If you can't really change the code, it's uh, somehow uh, very nice to actually see all the lo location where, where something have been hit. So the breakpoint properties are also very, very interesting. And you should definitely have a look if you, if you haven't. So we're going to continue. And uh, so it's now printing out uh, the names of the of the boats, right? So I have uh, Titanic and Oceanic, so Oceanic is slightly better than Titanic, so uh, maybe I want to have that boat later, right? So um, we now hit another breakpoint um, for the name field, because we say, okay, we want to know about all modifications of the name field, no matter where they happen. So I have uh, the modification over here in the hire boat method. So I'm uh, trying to hire a boat, and for some reason the hire boat just gives me a tag, right? So it does a big tag on my, on my forehead over there with the X uh, to saying, so this person has hired a boat. So if I see him later and he doesn't return the boat, I can, uh, I can go to them and actually ask them about it. So, but for now, we're just uh, gonna remove that line of code because it's kind of uh, erroneous over here and we have, a, we have another hit over here and uh, we're just gonna remove that. So, this is where we got now because we have a hot code reload, right? It's uh, jumping right back to the start of the method. The problem over here is um, if I uh, let it execute to the end, um, then it will uh, tell me, uh, I'm sorry, I'm starting over again. I want to continue over here. Um, if I let it continue, um, I'm going to hit uh, another breakpoint over here, which says get name. I didn't put a breakpoint on get name but I set a field breakpoint on name, and a field breakpoint is not only for modification, but also for access. So I can also see uh, everything which is accessing my field over here. And uh, I'm just gonna remove the breakpoint for now because I'm not really interested in accesses to my, to my field, but I still keep the modification breakpoint. So um, those are the things which can happen when you do a hot code replace, right? I, I didn't get the boat um, Titanic anymore. I did get but the boat Oceanic because I was jumping back in time. And so I, I was uh, suffering from those uh, side effects, which uh, those can have. Um, but otherwise, it's uh, quite nice. So let's execute it again. I still got the boat Titanic in a normal application run. And so let's see um, if I get another boat, if I just uh, return the boat because I don't want to have it here. So um, let's just uh, return the boat for now and uh, say if the returning of the boat was okay and uh, then hire another boat and maybe we get the oceanic and be more happy with that one. And um, so now we're hitting an illegal state exception um, which says, I'm sorry, only one boat can be hired at a time but I just returned the other boat, right? So there must be an error in there. So let's see, uh, we put a breakpoint on the exception, which is very convenient that you can actually click on it and it will directly uh, add a breakpoint. Otherwise, uh, you just uh, go to the, to the overview of breakpoints over here and hit the button at Java exception breakpoint and then you just, for example, uh, have a uh, null pointer exception breakpoint, which you can also set like that. And um, 
So let's go on and uh, debug our code and see where we hit actually the exception over there. Uh, let's continue debugging and make the code bigger again. Uh, so we still have uh, those access breakpoints over here. I'm just going to delete it for now because we don't need it anymore. And uh, then we're hitting the exception over there. So uh, let's inspect what's actually happening here. So from the available boats, I get a new boat. And uh, I'm actually checking if in the hired boat, boats, which is a map from person to boat, we already contain the key bo uh, for, the, for the person. So if the person actually has already hired a boat, we don't want to give them two boats at least not the big ones. And um, uh, so what I'm probably interested in, what's actually inside of the hired boats field at any time. So I can put a watch point over here and watch points are in the expressions view in IntelliJ, they are uh, more uh, in, the, in the same view like my uh, usual variables, which is actually nicer, but for now we're just uh, gonna go with that. And when I actually click on that and, and uh, expand it, it's gonna show me a lot of internal information about the hash map, which I'm not really interested in. So here's a nice button over there. Uh, show logical structure, so we got just gonna hit that. And uh, then we see, okay, there's actually the person over here, which should not be there because we actually returned the boat, right? Uh, so uh, probably there's something wrong in the method over here, which uh, is called return boat. So we're gonna uh, put our breakpoint over here and uh, we just uh, go back in time and say, okay, uh, run all the stuff again. And let's see how it goes. So over here, when we return the boat, we expect when we actually hit the rest, uh, the end of the method, so we uh, can directly go here um, without putting a breakpoint, I can just say run to line, and I'm actually uh, hitting that one. So higher boat should actually be empty. I can check now, uh, actually in the quick view, and it's not empty. And what I can also do is in my uh, variables overview, I can say, okay, I don't want to only see the person over here. I also want to know if there's uh, still some references to the person. And then I have a no new note over here and see, okay, the person is still referenced by the hash map, which shouldn't be the case because I already returned the boat. So to make it short, there's an error over here. It says get instead of remove. So we just uh, can fix that and say, okay, uh, remove that one over here. And if we then uh, run to the line, we can see now there's no reference left over here and our hash map is em uh, empty. So we actually kind of fix the code over here. So if I run it again, uh, it still says I still get the boat Titanic because uh, there's another error over here which says push instead of offer, but we're not gonna fix it uh, right now. So uh, let's see actually how Currently, it works to concatenate strings. There's always a lot of topics around conca concatenating sting strings. So if we want to know how it works right now. We just uh, put a breakpoint over there and uh, go into debugging mode and um, remove the method breakpoint over here and actually step into the system of print line, right, to see what's actually happening inside. If I step into that, I get to the person get name because it's the first statement that's going to be executed. I'm not really interested actually into stepping into getters and setters because uh, they are kind of usually if they're simple, not really informative. So I can say, okay, step filtering, filter, simple getters and setters. I don't want to step into them, right? So if I go on uh, and uh, execute that again and, uh, and step into that, now I'm landing in the string builder method, right? So I'm just skipping over, over that stuff. So there's another example I want to show, which is, uh, with, uh, has to do with concurrency. So I'm quickly going to execute that now and uh, explain to you what it does. So we have uh, two bank accounts over here, and uh, there's a bank transfer between the two bank accounts from one to the other, uh, about uh, 50 pounds. And it should actually execute the transfers once per second, but it's only executing one of them. No? and the application is still running, it should be finished by now. So there's uh, um, something wrong with that. And if I go to debug mode, I don't set any breakpoints over there. I just go to debug mode and it's still running, so it uh, has the same result. I can uh, just suspend the operations over here. Uh, that doesn't really show me much, but uh, there's another nice option over here, which has uh, show monitors. I go to show monitors and immediately the two threads over here uh, become red. And uh, now now I can see actually the monitors. So one of them owns the bank account with ID 25 and is waiting for 26. And the other one um, owns uh, 26 and is waiting for 25 actually. So this is uh, quite convenient to actually finding deadlocks. They immediately become red over there. 
So another uh, just a nice example over here, which you might uh, be already knowing from IntelliJ, uh, which now Eclipse has as well, is uh, showing the uh, immediate results while, while debugging, right? So if I just uh, step to this, um, then next to it, I get the current value of the variable over here, which you might already know from, um, from IntelliJ, but it's now also available in Eclipse uh, with an additional plugin. You can also do uh, all sorts of other stuff with that. So this is just code mining, and there's a lot of additions to that as well. So to finish things up very quickly, the best debugger ever made is a good night of sleep, right? So if you're stuck with something, maybe just go to sleep and have a look at it tomorrow. And that's all I have. Uh, you can fly it, uh, find the slides and the code, also including my notes, if you want to go uh, through it step by step, again slowly. And if you have any questions, just uh, find me later or contact me on Twitter or whatever information you may find. Thank you.